November, man. We, uh, Wanda Alger and then uh, Anna Mendez Farrell and Katie Souza and Dr. Miles and Bethel and 35 crazies from, from Bethel. This, all in the same month. You guys must be gluttons for punishment or something. I, uh, it's going to be, it's going to be a good, it's going to be a good, it's going to be a good month. How, how many of you enjoyed this weekend? Oh my gosh, this is, this has been, this has been wild. This has been such a wild, wild time. And um, uh, we're going to have a wild day. We, we've got um, uh, Anna Mendez Farrell in this service. Just in case you're wondering, you are at the 9 a.m. at Seattle Revival Center. And then uh, we have Wanda Alger at the 11 a.m. And then tonight we're actually going to go kind of more podcast style because I just got like a ton of questions, okay? Because there's just a lot of freaky weirdo stuff that's happening right now. And we got two prophets in the house. And not only that, but they are seers in the spirit. So they, they see kind of the other side. <laughs> they see kind of into some of the other realms. And I just love the, the, the seer realm. I just love just getting the victorious perspective of Christ Jesus. Uh, and so tonight we're going to sit down. Um, it's not going to be scripted. There's not really any sort of, you, you know, you know how, how, we, how I like to do it, kind of podcast style. Sit down at a table. We'll, we'll dim the light so that they forget about you. It's not going to be about getting you to say amen, and we're just going to dive into some crazy stuff. Even though you are loved, right? You are loved. And, but, you know, but anyways, uh, tonight is going to be, it's going to be great. Now, this whole weekend has been, has, has, has been great. Um, and, um, and God really is doing uh, some amazing stuff uh, on, on the earth. Is, is, is Michael here? Uh, uh, um, Michael, the, the Lord did something in your heart recently. I just saw your wife a second ago. Hey, hey brother, we, we have a second. Would you run up here really quick, quickly and just tell us what Jesus did? Would you just welcome Michael really quick? How, come on. I'm putting him on the spot, but and I'm doing this because the, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. We've been seeing so many um, healings and miracles lately, and, um, and you have to celebrate what Jesus is doing, because there's, there's no such thing as a small miracle. And Michael, would you just kind of quickly share with us what Jesus did? Certainly. Um, Pull it right up here. I, uh, I had a, uh, an ir irregular heartbeat. Um, and, and my sister says it's hereditary where um, I don't, my heart doesn't skip a beat. I have an extra beat. And uh, my doctor told me that I have an electrical impulse that shoots across my heart that causes it to beat extra. And um, he said it's not um, anything to be concerned about. But right. when it happens, um, I, I, anxiety comes over me and, and I feel I have a hard time getting oxygen in my lungs. Mm -hmm. Um, and it doesn't happen all the time. It just happens sporadically. And uh, um, about three weeks ago, um, I, I came Sunday morning, and, and it was happening in the morning. I told my wife, I don't feel real good. And uh, um, when we got here, Don was, um, your father-in-law was yeah. um, behind us. And I, and I mentioned to Don about it. And he said, yeah, my wife has something like that. And he said, can I pray for you? And I said, yeah. And, and so he prayed for me. And, and then we went into worship, um, and it happened to be, we were doing communion that, that day. Yeah. And so we sat down, and, 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 and uh, when, when the communion touched my tongue, all of a sudden I was like, <gasps> and my heart stopped beating a regular. Whoa. And, and, and it um, and it's like, well. <laughs> and later that week on Friday, it started to come back. And I said, no, the Lord healed me. And it stopped immediately again, and it hasn't come back. Well, yeah. Amen. All right, so let me just get this straight. How long, how long has this been happening? Um, I don't know, throughout my life. All right, so throughout your life, like over 10 years, over 15 years? Yes. yes. Yeah, okay, and then you are, you are in a service here, and um, Don prayed for you, and the, the second the, the, the body of Christ touched your tongue, it stopped? Yes. I got dance! Hold on, hold on, hold on. But then after, after, the, after the Lord healed you, Satan thought that he could come with a manifestation of what used to happen so that fear would hit your heart and you would actually open up your heart to take on the condition. But you said, 
No. You said, no. You said, no. You see, you see, sometimes the trick isn't getting healed. Sometimes the trick is keeping your healing. And, and here's the thing, that if the Lord has healed you of something, th- this isn't just about a heart being healed this morning. This is about keeping your healing. This is about telling the devil, no. No. No, you don't get to take my healing. And oftentimes, it's not that you're, that you're not healed anymore. It's just a manifestation of, of the old feeling, of, of an old occurrence. And, and it's to get you to open the door through fear back to that thing. And I feel like this morning, we are supposed to say no, no to the devil, to slam the door in his stinking face to get our victory back, to get our victory back. Yep, so listen, if, if you were healed and you lost, you lost it because you gave it up, because through fear, this is your morning to say no to the stinking devil. Can we all stand up to our feet right now? Yep, 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 yep. Father, we thank you for this testimony. We thank you for heart conditions being healed right now. 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 Even, even, even being triggered through that spirit of anxiety. Yep, yep, yep. We say spirit of anxiety, you are not for us. You are a spirit. You are not of the Lord. Yep, 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 yep. So we say out and up to the pit right now in Jesus' name. And for anyone that has that it, it is seemed that they have lost their healing. Yeah, we say that that's impossible. You can't, it's not a cell phone. It's not a remote control. You can't lose your healing. It's that you gave it up. And we take it back right now. We take it back right now. We take back our healing right now. And Satan, we say no. Just say no. And I don't care how you feel this morning. Say, I am healed. I am well, I am victorious in Christ Jesus, and I'm going to step into that reality by faith right now. Now just step in by faith right now. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. Come on, let's celebrate Jesus this morning. Um. The Word of God says first the natural, then the spiritual. And I've been asking the Lord, why did you heal? Because this wasn't something that was life-threatening. The doctor said you can live with it. There's no real danger. And, but the Lord said it's more than the, the physical heart right. that I want to heal. Right. I want to touch the, spill hearts of pe- the yeah. spiritual yeah. hearts of people and to bring the healing. Yeah, come on, come on, come on. Isn't that good? So good, Michael. High five. Love you, buddy. Yeah, yeah, come on. Glory to glory, glory to glory. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good. Okay. Um, Now, I met Anna Mendez Farrell um, at Charlie's Place over in Moravian Falls um, a, a year ago. And, um, and I had the on, honor of, of uh, sitting under the teaching of her husband, um, Emerson, who is kind of like this... Um, He's kind of like this supernatural scientist that breaks down everything like from the frequency of the glory and how to recalibrate your mind so that you're actually thinking and living and becoming more like Christ. And it's, and it's absolutely, the guy's absolutely fascinating. Um, and, uh, but Anna was with him and I didn't get to hear her minister, but I met her in the green room and Charlie said, hey, um, ask Anna about when she climbed Mount Everest. And that went into probably like a 45-minute um, uh, 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 testimony. And that was the short version because she wrote an, a, a book on this where she wasn't qualified. Um, she didn't have a permit to do it. In fact, the Lord led her right before the king at a certain point because the king wouldn't grant her access. And she basically said, um, that's great that you're a king, but I know the king above all kings, and I'm going up that mountain. And it is a, it is, and she did. It, and it proceeded into a, a massive earthquake where the Lord said, you better get off this thing because I'm about to destroy this part of the mountain. Yeah, yeah. I, I told my friends, I said, because uh, uh, she was speaking here on Friday night, and I sent out text messages to my friends. I said, you better get your butt, I don't care what your plans are, you better get your butt here on Friday night because this is one of the most freaky, deaky uh, intercessor prophets that I, that I know. That, that's the truth. That, that's the truth. If you like cute, you're not going to, I mean, she's, she's cute, but not in the spirit. She's a shredder. She, she's a ninja turtle in the spirit. Would you guys welcome Anna Mendez Farrell to Seattle Revival Center this morning? Oh, 
come on. Ah, ding, 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 ding. Ah, yes. She's a religious cow slayer. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Woo. Let's pray. Father, we, we <laughs> God, we thank you, Lord, for this, for this um, slayer of religious cows. Lord, we thank you there's going to be a barbecue this morning. Lord, it, this has been so much fun. You brought her to Seattle. Um, she, she, she took care of some business in downtown Seattle yesterday. <laughs> Lord, we know that she's here by divine assignment. Even at this 9 a.m., you, this is a, a unique moment in our history. And Lord, we just say, we know it is hallowed and we know it's holy. And we want to frame your holiness in this moment. In Jesus' name. Amen. So what a privilege to be here with you all. And we have been having an amazing weekend. Hallelujah. Just close your eyes. Let's just tune into the spirit. So whatever seed comes from heaven finds the right place inside of you. Holy Spirit, take over. Holy Spirit, speak to each and every one. And Father, as you speak to your people, speak to the city. Speak to the heavenly realms. Speak to the underground. That every realm in this region will hear the voice of God coming out of your throne into the region in the name of Jesus Christ that, that not one seed that you will be planting will be lost but it will prosper it will grow and it will become mighty and powerful hallelujah hallelujah all right okay let's open the bible in acts chapter 8 And verse 5, it says, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles he did. For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. When the word of God. Where the kingdom of God is preaching. Is preached. Joy comes into the city. Now this is a very powerful thing. It says. But there was a certain man. Called Simon. Who previously practiced sorcery. In the city. And astonished the people of Samaria. Claiming he was someone great. And this is the spirit of Seattle. Spirit of Seattle claims to be someone great. And is bound by the spirit of witchcraft. Okay. To whom they gave heed from the least to the greatest, to the greatest saying this man is the great power of God. And someone is trying to take that place in this city. With his money. Believing he can take the place of Christ, that he can take the world healing and standing as a Christ. There's only place for one Christ here and it's to Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And any other spirit that rises up to take his place is under the judgment of God. So Philip went on and the people were baptized and even Simon says, then Simon himself also believed and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed seeing the miracles and the signs which were done. So he was a Christian, right? He was a baptized Christian. He believed, 
He was baptized. Everything in order, right? But then the apostles, John and Peter, come to the city to bring the Holy Spirit. And when they bring the Holy Spirit by the laying of hands, this man says, oh, I want that gift and I offer you money. Money, money tied to this witchcraft spirit wanted to be the one to release the power. Okay. And then Peter said, you have neither part or portion in this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this your wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. Well, this is apostolic authority. If perhaps the God of mercy will forgive this thing. For I see, and I'm going to read from the original. Some of the other versions, the King James is wrong, but the other versions, some other versions are, are okay. The interlineal says, For I see that you are in the gall of bitterness and bound by iniquity. For I see. He saw the spiritual condition of this man and he was trapped in a gall of bitterness. Wherever there is bitterness, wherever there is resentment, is the antenna for witchcraft. Witch doctors, witches are after the rejected people. They're after the bitter people. They're after the people with resentment. Oh, I've been attacked by these demons. The problem is not the demons. The problem is not the witches. After 36 years of fighting the devil, I'm telling you, the devil is a cockroach. You can s smash him like that. Witches are nothing. The greatest power is being a son of God, a son of the day, a day, a, 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 a son of light. That is the power. The witches have no power. Bitterness has no power. Witchcraft have no power. But we have yielded to the same thing that Simon yielded. Bitterness, resentment, depression. The whole city is in, under a darkness of depression. Now, who controls a city? The only one that controls the city and has given the power to control a city is to the church. When Jesus resurrected from the dead, it says in Ephesians that he filled everything with his glory. He sat in the throne as the king of kings. And the whole earth and his fullness belongs to God. The throne, beloved people, is occupied. The throne does not belong to the devil. The throne belongs to God. The earth belongs to God, not to the devil. The cities belong to God, not to the devil. But we have yielded our authority as participating in the way they operate. The nation or a nation is in the same stage as the stage of the church. We want to see a nation change. We need to change the church. Because we are the only ones that have the authority to release angels or to bind angels. The devil has not that authority. The kingdom of darkness is not organized. The kingdom of darkness is a chaos. You think that, oh, they're all organized. They're not organized. They're one against another. Because jealousy, where there is je jealousy, where there is uh, strife, there's all kind of demonic work. Because that's how the kingdom of darkness operates. So don't you think they're organized. The kingdom of heaven is organized. The kingdom of heaven is order. We kind of think that, oh, the devil, he's all organized. He's all his powers, principalities, everything in control. They are not in control. They're against one another. 
They're striving. Who, who is the greatest one? I'm going to kill you so I can become the greatest one. That's the kingdom of darkness. I see you. That you are in the gall of bitterness. With everything that happened in the election. Many Christians gave themselves to depression, bitterness. Even perhaps not externally. But there was this thing that entered the nation. <sighs> depression. So the spirits of witchcraft... Can gain control. I'm bound by iniquity. Iniquity is not sin. Iniquity is the root of all sins. Sin is the fruit. You can forgive your sins. I mean, confess your sins. You cut off the fruit. But the tree. The question is not people sinning. The question is. Why? Why they sin? And I'm not just talking about pornography or robbery or whatever. Yielding to any declaration of darkness is sin. Yielding to any word of death and sickness spoken of your life. When you yield, you're yielding to the declaration of a servant. Of a voice that comes from hell to make you sick, to make you depressed, to make you fearful. And they release these trumpets of fear over the nation. And people are, oh, 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 oh. Now there's, there's an amazing angel assigned to this region. We've been seeing two angels during these two days. But there's a third angel. No, no, this weekend is a release of angels. There's a release of angels. There's a release of angels over, over the Northwest. There's a release of angelic and hosts. Myriads of angels are coming to take over. Hallelujah. And this is the angel of joy. There is no way. There is no way. I'm telling you. I have been in front of Satan myself. He has appeared to me wherever I go. I'm a warrior of the Lord. I'm a general of war. I go to the deepest parts in Africa, in India, in South America, in Mexico. Dealing with big demonic forces, warlocks. In Uganda, we have the Mount Carmel experience with a major warlock that controls all the warlocks of Africa. There's one thing, there's one thing that witchcraft cannot touch. And that is the joy that comes out of love. By the joy put, set before him, he endured everything and he conquered the kingdom. Of darkness. Joy is a substance. Joy is the substance of light. Proverbs says that light, the light of Christ, brings the joy into the heart. A joyful heart will never be defeated. A bitter heart is the bait for the enemy. Joy is one of the greatest weapons of war. Since I started with the, with the story of Uganda, here we are. This witch doctor is killing one member of the church every week. The pastor is absolutely desperate. They have a burial every week. And the sorcerer is just killing them and killing them and killing them. And then we show up. And then they say, we, we, have, we have no hope. And we have this book that came to us that says that, that we don't have power against powers and principalities because it's, it's, it creates casualties of war. 
And I said, well, let me tell you something. There is hope. And yes, we have power. Because heaven and earth are together. And I have, in Jesus Christ, heaven and earth are together. Heaven is not up there. That's a Babylonian idea. That's a religious idea. Wherever Jesus is, heaven is. Wherever Jesus is, heaven is. Wherever Jesus is, his angels are. Wherever Jesus is, there are miracles. Wherever Jesus is, there is hope. Wherever Jesus is, is re there is redemption. And I... I'm here to tell you, enough America, enough of the voices of destruction. We got prophet after prophet, prophesying destruction, prophesying the end of the world, prophesying the collapse of cities. This nation doesn't need prophets of destruction. We are ambassadors of life. We are ambassadors of joy. We are ambassadors of hope. The kingdom of God is not about destruction. Oh, the city, uh, the Lord is going to bring a tsunami over the west coast. From the pit of hell. This nation needs the voices of joy. Need the voices of those that know the Lord. For the Lord so much loved the world. These people don't even understand John 3, 16. Joy. Joy. And say, who, who is this doctor? This witch doctor. Oh, he's in the mountain. He has a shrine. Let's go to the shrine. And the Africans are. Let's go to the shrine. There's a greater power here than this thing here. So we went to the shrine. The shrine was empty. So we walk into the shrine. I start dismantling everything. Start pouring the wine representing the blood of Christ, destroying all this witchcraft, establishing angels of God. Once we destroy everything, before that we have an intercessory prayer in which the Lord shows us how these powers operate with the witch doctor. And he shows how this ancestral spirit were their, his helpers. So we destroy the realm of the ancestral spirit. So he was like, with no help. So finally, the people in the town went to tell the witch doctor. Oh, the Christians are in the shrine and they want to burn it. So the witch doctor comes up the mountain with all his paraphernalia, the bones, the skulls, and the whole thing. It's really scary. Feathers. And here we are. So we put a band in the mountain, and I told the brothers, just, just, just glorify the Lord, just sing unto the Lord. So they are playing, they are scared to death, this poor. <laughs> <laughs> but they are, they are playing, hoping this Mexican <laughs> is right, otherwise this is the end of the story. <laughs> so the witch doctor comes, I got my interpreter with me, so he starts cursing. You, you start telling me. I look in the eye. And he came back at me. And I was just laughing. I was just laughing at him. There's something a witch cannot tolerate. Is someone laughing? <laughs> he cannot tolerate. It's the greatest insult to the devil. Yeah. Laughing at the devil is the greatest insult. He defeated. He defeats. He defeats the kingdom of darkness when you are joyful. So here I'm laughing, and he takes what in Africa is called the powder of death. And that powder of death, I mean, I know because I came out of the occult, and, uh, and I knew all, this, all these things. And I was there by a trap of the enemy, seeking for Jesus, but I, was, I fell in the trap. And anyway, so I get to know. And I said, Lord, why did you allow me? I was, I was looking for you. Why did you allow me to fall into this trap? And he said to me, because it was very important for your call that you knew 
the weaknesses of the devil. That's what I allow you to go to the deepest places. And I knew one thing the devil cannot touch. He cannot touch true love. He cannot touch true joy. He can't. He tried. He tried. It's a wall. Because love and joy are a substance of light that repels and casts out darkness. So here we are laughing. And this guy, you are going to be dead in front of the town. At this point, the whole town has gathered in the mountain. I mean, it's like a thing, a big thing. Christians against the warlock. So I tell my people, okay, you just start clapping. Clap on earth as I will clap in heaven. And the fierce sword of the Lord will act, be activated. So we are laughing. And the guy, trap dead. Wah! Nothing happened. And all the town. So this guy comes with a big stick like that. I will take care of them. And the witch doctor says, no. This is a spiritual battle. And today, their Jesus is going to be ashamed. And I say, really? <laughs> Famous last words so here we are so he's desperate so he takes this this pot and he puts these burning coils with some kind of herbs and things and he puts it in there. <laughs> and all the people in the town What's going to happen? What's going to happen? And here we are rejoicing. Here we are. Here we are rejoicing. <laughs> so the guy is desperate. We don't drop dead. He cannot intimidate us. We're laughing louder and louder. Out of true joy. Yeah. It was really funny to see the guy. It was like a cartoon. It was really like a cartoon. You see, when you see through the eyes of God, these things look like a cartoon. So you see his eyes popping like that. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> no, really, it was so funny. <laughs> so so we're, we're filled with the Holy Spirit, <laughs> crack laughing at the guy. So he looked at us. He puts his hand inside his garment. It's a big silence. What is he going to do? He takes out his cell phone <laughs> and calls the police. <laughs> Come and help me because the Christians want to burn my shrine. <laughs> so the police arrive and the chief of police had converted to Christ and was part of the church. So Chief, what's happening? Why do you want to burn the shrine? And we have called angels to burn the whole thing. Not us with a match, but them. But they were seeing the spiritual realm. So they were all freaking out. So the pastor, at this point, he's like, <gasps> he grew up from here. <gasps> I'm a Christian. <laughs> so he started preaching. I said, preach, preach, preach the gospel to the people. You have the whole town for you. And this thing, this guy is defeated. So here we are. So we start preaching. Half of the town. Fall on the floor. Receive Jesus in his heart. The warlock goes all ashamed. And completely destroyed. The whole thing dry out to the roots. The whole city change. The whole city change. One of the main apostles and intercessors in Uganda called me, and uh, John Mulinde, and he said, Anna, you cannot imagine what happened in Masaka. The whole city changed. Wow. I mean, they even paved the roads, they put light. 
You can freely walk. There is freedom in the city. The whole city changed after that. So if you can get hold of this, the joy of the Lord is the greatest weapon. But this man could not get the joy. The Holy Spirit, the whole city was in joy. I just read. And the whole city rejoiced, but he couldn't. He couldn't rejoice. And there are people in the church that cannot rejoice. A revival of joy entered into this land a long time ago. But it got corrupted because people start to change the joy for entertainment. And they came to see how fun it was. Joy is not about a show. Joy is the substance of heaven. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the spirit. Joy is the Holy Spirit. And when we make the Holy Spirit a show, he goes away. But this region is sealed from before the foundation of the world with a seal of joy. That's why the devil has been so, 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 intense, so intense to keep the city under the gall of bitterness. Bitterness is darkness. Bitterness stops the grace. Most cancers come because of bitterness. The soul is trapped when we give ourselves to a trauma. Let me read this verse, Isaiah 7. Isaiah 7. Verse 6. This is the voice of the devil. Let us go up against Judah. Judah is a symbol of the church. We are the spiritual Judah. Let us go against the church and trouble it. And let us make a gap in its wall for ourselves. And set a king over them, the son of Tabel. Let us go against Judah and trouble it. The real word here is torment. Let's create a gap in the church. Where we have already 40,000 gaps with all these denominations. You know what tabel means? Tabel means good for nothing. As far as we allow the devil to create gaps between us, gaps among churches, gaps inside of our hearts, he traps us, he troubles us, and he captivates us. And the church remains good for nothing. I mean, we can have miracles, we can have good time, we can have people save. We're talking about a nation. We're talking about a reality that is changing this nation into something horrific. Rather we take responsibility on what is going on. Right. On this thing or this thing goes downhill. Right. The condition of the nation is the condition of the church. Yeah. Yeah. And the church has opened so many gaps because of complacency. The church is complacent with sin. Is complacent with bad behavior. We allow and that is the doctrine of Jezebel. She allows. It's a, a permissiveness. Oh, it's a permissiveness. That we can allow certain sins and then we, are, we feel we're safe and going to heaven. And this thing causes. This is why Christians are attacked by, by witches. And all the Christians are, ah, oh, the witches. Oh, we are the state with more witches. They're nothing. But because of the gaps and the permissiveness and our yielding 
into their suggestions. When, when you go to someone that suggests that you have something deadly, you're submitting to the wrong voice. The voice of God, listen to me because this is very important. The voice of God is redemptive. The Old Testament, God is different than when Jesus came and overcame everything. Redemption came to the land. The land that was in darkness saw great light. Light is joy. Light is hope. Light is health. Divine health. So we really need to take consciousness. Because the church is so preoccupied on the things of this earth. On what is happening to my body. Oh, oh, how I feel. Your greatest weapon. And, 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 and the divine assignment for Seattle is joy. It's joy. It's joy. Joy is creative. Joy is powerful. Joy is healing. Joy is the kingdom of God. When the pandemic started, tons of people, pastors dying and everything. And, and, and we're very strong in divine health. Because I saw my mother and my twin sister being killed by pharmaceuticals. Two powerful women of God killed by pharmaceuticals. So I became a crusader for divine health. And I guess these poisons. You know the name pharmakia? You know what it means? Pharmakia is the name for witchcraft. Those who practice pharmakia, what the Bible said, will not enter the kingdom of God. Hmm. Because it's the same principle. Witchcraft, you go to a witch doctor, he operates this miracle, you go all happy, and he sends seven demons after you to destroy something else, and then you come back. And then you're a prisoner going back, and then he makes a miracle, and then he makes something worse, and worse, and worse, and worse, Till you're done. The same thing with pharmaceuticals. Oh, I got healed from this. Yeah, but they destroy your immune system. They destroy your liver. They destroy your cells. The solution for the church is not pharmaceuticals. The solution for the church is to believe. Is to really understand. Understand. A church with understanding lives in divine health. A church with understanding lives in divine joy. Yeah. It is the lack of understanding that causes us to yield to all these things. Yeah. When the COVID started, one day I wake up and I have this intense fever. Went to my bed and we go to the most unhealthy places. And we never take a vaccination or pills of any kind. And we have literally seen how viruses and, and germs just literally scorch as they touch our body. So I had this, this fever, went to my bed, and I start to rejoice. I really start to rejoice. I say, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I really needed a day of rest. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to hug you. And I start just laughing and rejoicing and rejoicing and rejoicing. And joy literally scorched the COVID. Yeah. 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 Then I went to Mexico. I got to take the test to come back to the United States. And I went to the lab and I said, can you please make the, the test of antibodies? I want to make sure what was that fever. Oh, you are filled with antibodies against COVID. It lasted hours. Me in the bed, just laughing. You see the different approach? We need a kingdom approach to situations. Joy. Joy. We have chosen bitterness so long. And believe me, there is a spirit of bitterness and depression in the city. I don't know if it was you or... 
It was one that, that says that it's not that you are under a demon upon yourself. It's the atmosphere. It's the atmosphere, but you yield to. The problem is yielding. I, I, I love what this guy says. No. No, devil. No. COVID. No. No. We need to practice. No. Somebody says no. Glad you brought it. Hallelujah. One of my heroes in... Uh, one of my heroes in Christianity is Francis of Assisi. Francis of Assisi was born in the 13th century, dark age to the top. The Catholic Church has completely forgotten who Jesus was. The Christianity had no idea who Jesus was. The Mass was in Latin, nobody understood nothing. There was some guy hanging on a cross that nobody speaks about him. Everything was about taking the tithes and the money from the people. They have no idea who Jesus was. No gospel was preached. You have to pertain to the Catholic Church or you go to hell. That, that, that was the situation. And the Lord chooses this prophet. And he chooses him in jail. He's, there is a war in Assisi. And, uh, and there, there's a piece of the gospel that is given to him by another prisoner. And it was about the rich young man that Jesus was preaching to him that asked him to give all his money to the, to the poor. And, uh, and, and, and Francesco, he was like so touched by this. And he was a very, very wealthy man. His father was one of the richest men of Assisi and they have tremendous businesses and everything. And he's so touched by God. I mean, literally, absolutely touched by God. And when he's released from prison, he decided to leave absolutely everything and preach the gospel to the letter. To the letter. A complete conversion. And he, sp he stands in the main square of Assisi and he completely strip of his clothes. In those days, there was, it was not considered like a sexual thing. It was considered you were a fool. So the bishop is all frightened and he throws a ragged tunic on top of him. And he goes like that to the mountains, having renounced to everything. Everybody considers him a fool. So he's before the Lord, and the spirit of joy takes him. He was one of the most joyful characters in history. Obviously, after this magnificent life, maybe I can tell something. The Catholic Church completely corrupted his testimony and everything. They make him a saint and blah, 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 blah. Make an order of the Franciscans. That had nothing to do with Francesco. Francesco was the man, the prophet of God used by God to bring Jesus back to the Catholic Church. The greatest revival or awakening ever in history, beyond Paul the Apostle and the early church, was the revival of Francesco. They touched all Europe. They didn't have nothing. They were barefooted. The weather was like Seattle in Assisi. They walk in the snow like that. And the Lord sent them to preach. I said, Lord, how are we going to go to preach to the world if, I mean, we don't have even a donkey to take us. And what he did, he brotherhood with creation. He brotherhood with creation. He says, I, I have nobody else to worship with me. Birds, worship with me. Trees, worship with me. Grass of the field, worship with me. And he made creation his ally. So he started laughing when the other says, but how are we going to go to preach to this place or to other priests? And he started laughing. Ha, ha, ha. He laughed all the time. <laughs> Man of little faith. Brother Wind, can you please take us to that city? And Brother Wind will come in a windmill 
I take them to every city in Europe. Translated from one place to the other. They conquer all Europe. I'm telling you, they conquer all Europe by the thousands. When he worshiped, sometimes he was so, he's, he, in one of his sayings, because I, I, I love the guy so much because I'm into creation and, and the animals and the whole thing. And uh, I love the guy that I went deep into the original um, writings of Francesco. Most of them are in Italian, but blessed be the Lord that has given me several languages and I can read Italian. And uh, so I started to dig and my goodness, he, he was saying that when you are lifted up from all the weight of this world, your spirit becomes so light that your body becomes so light. And many times he was seen as he was worshiping with the birds that they all took off together. Up and down and fly above. Miracles after miracles. One after the other. The most amazing deliverance. And what led him was the spirit of joy. Because he got absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. And uh, I want to read to you. Still got five. I want to read to you part of his writings when he write about joy. So he's walking with one of his brothers, brother Leo, and he asks him, tell me what is true joy? And he starts speaking about true joy is, he says, imagine that we are walking in this wind and snow and they were traveling from Perugia to a convent looking for shelter because there was a storm, a, snow, a snowstorm. And he says, imagine we arrive to the convent to look for shelter and food and we're all thirsty and tired. And the doorman just kick us out. But we don't react. We just say thank you. And we knock again because we know that he knows us and, and, and knock again. He knocks several times and then he says, and if urged by cold and hunger, we knock again calling to the porter and entreating him with many tears to open to us and to give us shelter for the love of God. And if he comes out more angry than before, exclaiming, these are but importunate rascals. I will deal with them as they deserve. And taking a knotted stick, he sees us by the hood and throwing us on the ground, rolling us in the snow and shall beat us and wound us with the knots of the stick. If we bear these injuries with patience and joy, thinking of the suffering of our blessed Lord, which we would share our out of love for him, write, O oh brother Leo, that here finally is perfect joy. And now, brother, listen to the conclusion. Above all the graces and all the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which Christ grants to his friends, is the grace of overcoming oneself and accepting willingly out of love of Christ all suffering, injury, discomfort, and contempt. For in all other gifts of God, we cannot glory, seeing they proceed not from ourselves, but from God. According to the words of the apostle, that what have you, what have you that you have not received from God? And if we have received it from God, why do we glory as if we had not received it? But in the cross of tribulation and affliction, we may glory. Because as the apostle says again, I will not glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the joy set before him, the joy of seeing salvation, for the joy of seeing your city saved, you can endure all kinds of things. 
I know. I mean, I was born again in Mexico, a nation dedicated to Satan. Where you start to open the voice to say Jesus, and we were literally were stoned, stoned with stones, with burning coals. One day I was preaching in the main square, and they came to me with a knife in the throat. If you continue, I slice your throat. And I started laughing and laughing and laughing. And the guy could not believe I was laughing and laughing and laughing. As I was laughing, the children that were there started to laughing. And the whole army of the devil was defeated by laughter. Yes. We need to shake off the comfort of America. We are too much in the comfort zone. We are too much into the entertainment church system. And we have to take responsibility. What is happening to you is because of the choices you have made. Don't put everything on the devil. Don't put anything on the devil. We attract. We attract by our thinking. We attract by our bitterness. We attract by the things that we hold on. The things that are happening. Sickness is attract to darkness. Oh, why is this happening to me? Search your heart like the brother said. This is not about healing the physical heart. Which is it? It is as well. But God needs the healing of the heart of Seattle. The healing of the heart of Seattle. And Father, as we close today. I see before me the heart of the city of Seattle, bound by iniquity in the gall of bitterness, overshadowed with disorder, overshadowed with darkness and depression. And it is written, I have called you as a covenant to the nations to call the captives free. And those that are in darkness to say, come forth. And I speak to the heart of Seattle. And I say, heart of Seattle, your Savior is here. The city has a soul. Not only you have a soul. The city has a soul. And we need to address the soul of the city. The broken soul filled with all the gaps that the church allowed. We allow the gaps. There are in the city. It's not Biden. It's not the governor. It's not the Democrats. It's the condition of the church. Amen. Father, I speak to the heart of Seattle. And I speak redemption. Hear me, heart of Seattle. Hear me in the core of who you are, precious people. That your redeemer is here. To take you out from that pit of oppression. To take you out of that pit of bitterness. That gall of bitterness and iniquity. And I pull you out. I said, you that are in darkness, come forth to the light. Come forth to the joy. And I pull down from heaven the divine design of this city. A design of joy. A design of creativity. A design of hope. A design of healing. Receive Seattle. Receive Seattle. The healing in your heart. The healing in your heart. And if you're here and you say, I hear what the Holy Spirit has said. And I want to take responsibility in my own life. I want you to stand up. If you want, probably maybe... You have issues of bitterness, issues of depression, issues of anger. Maybe you were rejected. Maybe you were slandered. Maybe you were robbed. Maybe they did all kind of horrible things against you. All things work for good. And I want you to see in all those things that happened to you, 
the cross of Christ. He endured it for you. And he allowed you to be a participant of his cross. But inside of the hearts, we have a lever. A lever that we can tilt to bitterness and anger. Or we can tilt it to joy, thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything that has happened to me. Everything they have done to me. It contributes for good. For now, I'm a more mature person. For the level of joy that I can receive is proportionate to the level of suffering you went through. And Father, I renounce this gall of bitterness. And Father, I call forth the prisoners of depression, the prisoners of bitterness, the prisoners of anguish, the prisoners of fear. Come forth! Come forth, says the Lord. Come forth, says the Lord. Come out of that prison. There's no, no guardian in your prison. Come out in the same way you come out from a door. You can come out from any prison. Amen. Father, I repent. I repent. I want you to repent of something really deep. Because really, the joy of the Lord is, is a mark in the city. And the revival that was here before wants to come back. But never ever take the Holy Spirit as an entertainment. Laugh when you need to laugh. The Holy Spirit is not to entertain you. It's a very serious thing. And you don't want the Lord to say to you like he said to Simon. Pray if perhaps the Lord forgives you for taking the Holy Spirit as an entertainment. There's a serious stuff happening in this place. The Lord is not bringing all these powerful people to make an entertainment center with all the big hits of Christianity. They're here to quip because you are so precious. One thing I learned, in the darkest places of earth, the Lord is the major strategy, a, stra a strategy, strategist. He never puts weak people in the toughest area. He puts his main, most powerful people in the toughest area. That means that from above, you have a seal and you have a purpose. And you have a design of being a mighty, powerful person to bring the light, the glory, and the joy to this city. Amen? And I want you to embrace that destiny. And to shake the fears. And to shake all this nonsense of darkness. And when you do that, there's no witch doctor. There's no witch. There's no spell. There's nothing that can touch you. Sickness will not touch you. Nothing will touch you because nothing can touch the substance of love, which is joy. Hallelujah. Fill them, Lord. Fill them with your joy. 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 The true joy. The true joy that overpasses all understanding, that breaks the walls in the heart. That breaks the stony hearts. The joy that comes and feels. Like the song was saying. Feel the caverns of my heart. But you needed to understand. What were those caverns. Because he's not going to go over your will. Now you understood. Now let him. Let him. Feel those gaps. That the enemy built. With your joy. Joy, 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 fill them, Lord. Fill them with your joy, a joy that goes way within, a joy that goes way within, a joy that fills, a joy that fills. I call the Holy Spirit of joy to fill this land, fill this land, fill this land, fill this land. 
restore, redeem your church, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm going to have to respect that we have another speaker coming. But what started now, it will continue. It's not about, oh, it only happened two minutes. No, 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 no. It grows, it grows, it grows, it grows. It's open inside of you. It's open. It has been open inside of you. Amen. I love you with all my heart and see you tonight for the questions and answers and interrogation and whatever. <laughs> Hey, make sure that you, um, one more time, let's give a big thank you to Anna. Amazing. Let me say one thing. Before I leave, please go to the table. We had amazing essential oils that are mixed by my husband, Emerson. And will you enter the path of essential oils? I mean, the power of the Holy Spirit that is in the oils to heal you, to restore you. I mean, even, even to change your mind is amazing what happened. You will become act literally addicted to the essential oil. So we brought some over there and also enjoy the art. I'm an artist. I'm a restorer of the mountain of art. And the Lord told me whatever, when, when I give you a, pa a, a picture to paint, that will manifest in the house of the people. And we, we make them really accessible. Because my goal is not to make fortunes. My goal is that the art of God can be in every household and do the work because art is a very important thing. So please visit the table. Thank you. God bless.